Hey, and welcome to Sage Free News and Views. This is your host, uh, Brian About Town, and we're we're having our second episode. We had a great start last week, a lot of uh, compliments. We got a lot of uh, correspondence, and we're out here today at the uh, Fitness and Activity Center. I want to bring on Richard Griggs. Richard Griggs, the program director for Fitness and Activity Center. Always good to Hi, see you, sir. Brian. And you had a very successful uh, Special Olympics last week, I believe. We did, yeah. Wednesday, May the 9th, we had a great day. We were out at Statesville High School for our annual Spring Games event, which is, uh, we have lots of events throughout the year, but Spring Games is by far our largest event of the year where we have all of our active athletes together on one day. Uh, it was a beautiful day. We had a little bit over 400 athletes out there participating and about 750 volunteers that it takes to make all that run. And uh, so it was a great day. We had a great time. So I'm looking out there at the pool. It's about time to open the pool? It is, yeah. The pool will open next weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, it'll open on that Saturday at 10 a.m. And it'll be open Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And then after that, it will be open on weekends only until uh, Saturday, June the 9th. It'll be open for, for the rest of the summer until school goes back in. It'll be open weekends only again until Labor Day. And what else do we have to look forward to? we got lots of other great things coming up. Um, this Friday night, we've got a Zumba Glow. Are you a Zumba guy? <laughs> no. Are you Zumba? Uh, we've got a Zumba Glow event. That's going to be this Friday at 6 o'clock. That's here at the Fitness and Activity Center. Um, it's, uh, they'll have black lights and glow sticks and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great opportunity to get out and get moving and do something fun and different. Um, then, like I said, the next weekend the pool's opening. Wednesday, May the 30th is National Senior Health and Fitness Day. So, am I a senior? Not quite. Well, depends. No, you only have to be 50 go. to participate oh, in Senior okay. Day. Um, we'll have nat National Senior Health and Fitness Day. That'll be out here at the Fitness and Activity Center. That starts at 9 a.m. and runs until noon. We'll have different group, you know, group fitness classes geared towards seniors. We will have speakers uh, on various health related topics. We'll have refreshments. We'll have all kinds of cool stuff going on. Um, and that's a free event for folks to come to. And then on Saturday, June the 2nd, we've got uh, Art in the Park okay. coming on. And that's our, our fourth annual event that we've had out at Martin Luther King Jr. Park, formerly Lakewood Park, right over there on Lakewood Drive. Um, we've got a great event lined up that day. It'll be 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, it's an event that we do in conjunction with the Idle Arts Council. We'll have a bunch of artists set up throughout the lake. We'll have live music at the amphitheater. Um, we've got Outlaw 21 booked already. We've got Rocky Lynn who's going to be out there performing oh, wow. as well. And we'll be adding a couple more. We've got Cabarrus Brewing Company that's going to be on site that's going to handle our beer garden this year. So it's just going to be a great free family event out there at uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Park. So you're put a, that on your calendar. You're a busy guy. We'd like to stay that. That's right. So thank you very much. Busy Rick. people stay at Thank time. you. That's, I, that's what I need to do. Get stay busy. So come out to the Fitness and Activity Center and see what it's all about. So thank Please you, Richard. Do. Yeah, thank you. All right. Hey, we want to thank again uh, Richard Griggs for having us out here at the Fitness and Activity Center. And uh, welcome again to our second show this uh, today. Uh, we want to thank some of our sponsors, Randy Marion, Piedmont Healthcare, Blue Harbor Bank, F Fast Fields, and Key to Escape. And we're going to be there next month filming something there. But first, um, I want to bring up uh, today's show. We're going to have uh, some recap from the Mitchell graduation. We're going to have an interview with uh, Commissioner James Mallory. Then we're going to have an interview with John Galena of Purple Heart Homes. Uh, he's going to be talking about his new book. We have a first responder interview with Captain Kyle Bell of the Statesville Fire Department. And then we'll end it up with Power Cross. I was there last week to MC that. But first, let's bring on Mike Furman for some news. Mike, it's good to have you on our second show. Thanks, Brian. I'm glad we made it to week two. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good streak. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to point out this week. Uh, definitely fit in the good news category. Uh, I was out at the Statesville Country Club last week uh, where hospice uh, had a reception to honor the Gordon family right. who announced they were uh, donating $500,000 to establish the Calman Gordon Endowment for Hospice wow. of Iredell, which is uh, the Gordon family's generosity is just incredible. And so much. And if you haven't been to the Gordon Hospice House, this just is going to add to the family's legacy. Uh, the second thing I would point out is uh, a great achievement for South Iredell High School. Uh, their JROTC team uh, was honored at the Trauma Town Council last week for an incredible accomplishment. Uh, they were uh, named the 2018 National Drill Championship team. Wow. So a great accomplishment for them, and we're, we're happy to share that good news this week. Excellent. Excellent. Well, you know, uh, last week uh, Mitchell had their graduation. They had to do a do-over because there was a rain out on Friday night. It went over there. But I did get some interviews with two students, or three students actually, and listen to what Amber has to say. She's a mother of three, how she was able to go back and get her uh, degree. And there's an, another gentleman, Joe Babington, went back to uh, get a second career started. So let's see what they have to say at the uh, graduation. Right about town. I'm here at Mitchell College. It's time to graduate. Is everybody happy to graduate? Yeah! Okay, I got three of the graduates right here. It's Amber, Kristen, Kristen, and you guys are going to go celebrate tonight, right? Yeah. And tell us about your experience at Mitchell. 
Um, so I've had a great experience with Mitchell. Um, I feel like I've gotten the education that I've been for. And it's a, it's, a, it's a good value. You know, you're not spending a thousand, thousand dollars and you're getting a world-class education here. Right. Amber, how was your experience? It's been great. Um, I'm a mom to three children and I work a full-time job, so I live a very busy life. And I'm still able to complete all my classes online. I've only had to take two classes on campus. It's very convenient. It's very easy to work around my daily life. See, she just sold it right there. So Mitchell yeah, College is the value. Okay, congratulations to all of you. Let it go. Hey, I ran into Joe Babington. Did I get that right, Joe? Yes, Joe Babington. That's okay. Okay, <laughs> so more graduates, and you can see that Joe, and I'm not saying you're old, Joe, but you obviously are a little older than some of the traditional I'm, a, I'm an untraditional, I'm a returning student, non-traditional, as they call it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> uh, what, what kind of degree are you getting? Uh, I'm getting a welding technology degree from Mitchell. See, yep, if you want to get a second career, go back and learn a trade or, or learn any kind of vocation, it's never too late. It's always a good time. Was your so, experience good? My experience was wonderful. I started, uh, I started here to, to do this as a hobby. Got into my first semester and decided I was going to finish out the associate's degree and uh, change my career. So Excellent. it was it, it it really got me excited and got me going. So you would say it's a good value? Absolutely. I felt very good about the value here. Um, you know, you can afford the classes. The the scheduling is, is it works with you, and um, you know the the instructors and the staff like Kelly uh, that's over here that we were talking to earlier Kelly, really really, make really, a, per, really make provides you with with, a, like, with valuable <laughs> valuable resources. Okay, so. <laughs> This is all about Mitchell. It's Mitchell Community College, a Mitchell Advantage. So uh, thank you, Joe. Congratulations. Have a good time tonight and Great. celebrate. Thanks, sir. So, Mike, there you. you go. I mean, this, these are non-traditional students. I mean, Mitchell is meeting the needs of folks coming out of high school as well as uh, folks who want to go back to school. Oh, Mitchell has something for everyone, whether you want to be in a program to get an eight-week certificate to prove that you're ready to handle an office job. They have uh, law enforcement training programs that are 16 weeks, uh, and they have a new program coming up that I think you're going to talk a little bit about. That's right, because uh, you had it uh, in the uh, the news edition this week it's a combined EMT fire training program and in our first responder we'll be talking about that a little bit right correct I think most people don't realize that when they call 911 a lot of the people who show up have been through Mitchell that's right been through Mitchell and a lot of times they'll see the fire department show up too okay so you did an interview um, this week with uh, Commissioner James Mallory yes uh, we were out at the uh, the new public safety center on Bristol Road right. uh, talked a lot about what's what's happening out there as well as with the new jail and you know how the county uh, spending $42 million right now on those two projects uh, and borrowing very little money. Uh, so let's take a look at that. Yeah, thanks, Brian. We're out here at the new um, Iredell County Public Safety Center with uh, General James Mallory, Chairman of the Iredell County Board of uh, Commissioners. Thanks, Mr. Mallory, for meeting with us today. Great to be here. Uh, uh, give us an idea of what we have behind us here. This is a, the new $16 million public safety center. Uh, a lot of different agencies are going to be housed here. Uh, what difference is this going to make for our first responders and for the citizens of the county? Well, it's going to make a tremendous difference, uh, not only in terms of how they operate, but uh, how they deliver services in the future. Um, you know, our EMS services have operated out of uh, what used to be a dealership. Uh, the um, vehicles that they have are out in the elements, and uh, that's never good when you have sensitive equipment uh, in those. Um, so they've had a, uh, a only marginal situation. Uh, the uh, emergency communication center is they are literally cheek to jowl. They can't move. They can't uh, accept any additional capabilities even though our call volume has basically over the last decade doubled. Right. And so uh, we have uh, worked every which way to configure and move people out of supervisors' offices and put consoles in those, um, and there's just no, no more wiggle room. Uh, and yet we are continuing to grow as a county. Uh, we're anticipating uh, to grow uh, to, uh, you know, 15% over a 10-year period. Uh, and that's pretty significant growth rate. So that would put us near 200,000 people, 190,000? Well, you know, right now we're at about 172,000. We're probably going to be in by 2020, uh, 20, 2025, we'll be just shy of that 200,000. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we have an aging population, interestingly enough. Uh, the, uh, uh, the number of uh, older residents and citizens will, for the first time, uh, exceed the growth in uh, younger children. 
So with that change in demographic comes a change in demand for services. EMS services then start to increase dramatically. So we have to be uh, planning for the future, that future growth. And uh, what this building does is uh, helps us accommodate uh, not only all of those vehicles in the bays that you see uh, right here, mm -hmm. uh, but also uh, with our new distributed basing model, where out at Cool Springs and now Trinity, you'll see uh, uh, volunteer fire departments uh, are reflecting this same sort of team of teams approach. Mm -hmm. That is, you have fire department, fire services, you also have uh, EMS, you have rescue, and uh, the Sheriff's Department has uh, an area to operate on. So this is a team approach. It's not just EMS. Our emergency communication center will be here. It's uh, the, the trend in North Carolina is to um, uh, cut down on duplication and to be able to uh, have uh, multiple agencies served by one communications network. And so uh, the 911 board is uh, parses out dollars based on the ability to serve a larger community, a regional community. And, One last uh, area I'd like to touch on would be education funding. We've, we've been covering the school budgeting process, and it's a tight school budget, uh, just as you would probably want it to be. Um, there is some optimism, though, I think, in Iredell Statesville schools about the budget for the following budget year, which would be 2019-20, based on the property revaluation. Uh, is there a good reason to be optimistic? Well, I think we're all optimistic. Uh, you know, we've seen a, a fair amount of growth. Um, even in the years where we haven't had a revaluation, uh, we've been able to, we've seen an increase in that revenue. So uh, this year is a little less than last year. Uh, this year we have about a 2% anticipated increase in overall uh, income. So our proposed budget, and we're halfway through the budget, so I don't want to speak out of turn and, and all, but uh, it would appear uh, that uh, with only minor adjustments that uh, the schools will get about a two and a half percent increase. So if they're getting more of an increase than the overall increase mm -hmm. the county is getting. Mm -hmm. uh, but school funding accounts uh, in terms of what we actually spend, not just that are maybe generated by a sales tax mm -hmm. that goes directly to schools and there's no questions asked, but in terms of county, I'll call it net county funds, um, we spend about 54% of our budget on education. And the reason we invest so heavily in education is that uh, education and economic development are going to the hip. <clears throat> we have to have a, uh, uh, a workforce that is ready and able uh, equipped with the soft skills and the ability to learn the hard skills uh, to meet our employers' needs. <clears throat> so, uh, our schools have been very uh, good to work with in terms of sort of reorienting to not just focus on four-year college, which is where about a third of our students go, mm -hmm. but the other half to better of our student body population needs to be equipped to be able to go out and fill the jobs. And you can see a bunch of signs around here saying, now hiring, mm -hmm. second and third shifts, you know, mm -hmm. lots of businesses are looking for good employees. We've gone from, you know, several years ago, 7% high of about 7% unemployment down to 4%. And when you're at 4%, that's traditionally full employment. Right. Taking into effect, you know, people that are not in the workplace for various reasons. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, this has been our second edition of Movers and Shakers, and uh, we'll send it back to you, Brian. Commissioner Mallory is a big proponent of teamwork. He mm -hmm. talks about how we can do some shared services, saving, getting synergies together. So that was a great interview. And you can see the full interview. Right. Right. We'll have the longer version on SVL Free TV. Okay. Uh, uh, we picked out some highlights just for this show. You know, this show could easily be an hour. I know, we are already up to a half hour, I think. Okay, so uh, this next uh, guest we have, John Galena. You're really excited about this uh, interview. Yeah, uh, we spoke with John at length about his, uh, his new book. Uh, you can see it right here, Wounded Homecoming, The Uphill Battle, The Uphill Journey of Wounded Veterans from Battlefield to Homefront. 
a book he co-wrote with uh, Dale Beatty, who, who passed away, uh, unfortunately, uh, right before the book was published. But uh, just some great storytelling in the book, and I, I was excited to sit down and, and talk with John. I think uh, Purple Heart Holmes is, is doing great work and all across the country, and, and it's incredible that it's all started right here in Statesville. So let's take a, let's take a look. Thanks, Brian. We're here at Purple Heart Homes today with John Galena uh, talking about the release of his new book, uh, Wounded Homecoming, The Uphill Journey of Wounded Veterans from Battlefield to Homefront, which he wrote with his battle buddy, Dale Beatty. Uh, John, thanks for taking the time to join us today. Um, really appreciate, uh, first of all, I've read most of the book, uh, just some great storytelling, and I think provides a lot of insight into uh, not only you and Dale and your relationship, but also the experience that um, you know combat wounded veterans all over the country face when they return home. Well, thank you for uh, for being here and uh, for the time and opportunity. Uh, it's great to be on the show for the first time. Uh, you know, really, uh, wounded homecoming is is just to be able to help folks understand that as a uh, veteran, whether you're from Iraq or Afghanistan uh, or whether you served in Vietnam or World War II Korea or anywhere in between, we're not different. We're all the same. Uh, Dale and I share stories of our childhood and, and show the similarities. Uh, in addition, we show and share the similarities of our military service. Uh, what was not similar for us and, and our experiences was that Statesville and Iredell County welcomed us home differently than most veterans experience a welcome home. And that made a, a profound impact on us. And seeing other charities and the work that they did, we realized that we could help veterans that were in need of housing assistance. And uh, with that in mind, uh, where our society really is, is made up of, of uh, people and in a, in a manner that they impact us and, and we're threaded together almost like a puzzle. And so when you take a, a piece of a puzzle, uh, maybe like a, a veteran, and remove them into an extreme environment, take a piece of puzzle, drop it in a cup of coffee, uh, will that puzzle piece ever fit back the same? It's not. Uh, society has to, likewise for the veteran that went to combat, they have to make room, they have to accept. Uh, our veterans back in the society and, and that's what Statesville and Iredell County did for us and what we share with uh, the rest of the world and how they too can help their veterans and their communities do the same. And uh, just before I forget, all the proceeds from the book sale are going to benefit uh, Purple Heart Homes, correct? That's right. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the process of writing the book. Uh, when we were talking earlier, you mentioned that you know you and Dale didn't really see yourselves as authors, uh, but when you were out talking about Purple Heart Homes, people would say, you know, you guys really need to write a book and get this down. So just talk a little bit about the process. Um, would your English teachers be surprised that you guys were authors at this point? You know, uh, Dale and I always uh, have said, you know, North Ireland and West Ireland graduates can do a lot if they put their mind to it. And uh, this is just proof of that. I, I hope that, uh, you know, all those uh, uh, English teachers uh, would be proud of us in, in that regard. Uh, yeah, it was a, a wonderful experience. Uh, we had a, uh, a publisher out of Chicago who's been working with us for about the past year and a half. Uh, we had over 600 hours of interviews and, and work and creating the uh, basic content for the book. Uh, there's some irony in it, uh, certainly uh, uh, in Dale's passing uh, just a few days after we finished the, the final edit on the manuscript. And then, uh, you know, looking back, we, we actually met and were introduced to a publisher on Dale's birthday a year prior. So, you know, it was really, um, you know, bittersweet um, going through the process of uh, reliving our 22 years of friendship together to be able to write the book. Um, and then, uh, you know, him not see it in the same way. You know, it's uh, it's been tough. Uh, really proud of it. We got a lot of uh, pre-orders, a lot of people, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, reading it. It'll be on Amazon on uh, May 8th, so we're, we're happy about that. Uh, looking forward to uh, being able to share with communities how they can make a difference for their better. Uh, we're approaching the three-month uh, anniversary of uh, Dale's passing. Uh, wanted to talk with you for a few minutes just about <clears throat> how Purple Heart Homes is doing. Uh, give us an idea of what projects you're involved with now. Um, maybe the support that you've experienced since Dale's passing and 
and give us an idea of what the future looks like for Purple Heart Homes. You know, I, I think in, in many ways, um, from, from a support aspect, Statesville is continuing to do what Statesville has always done. They, they care about their own, they care about their community, and, and that for me just continues to validate that you know where I live is a great place to live, and I'm, I'm really happy for that. Um, the, the support that's poured out for the family has been phenomenal, whether it be through the Dale Beatty Family Trust or whether it be through folks uh, checking on the family, helping do little chores around the house. Uh, it, it's really tough to write the honey-do list and to do the honey-do list. And so uh, the, the family's had, uh, had a, a lot of need and uh, Dale was just bigger than life. You know, you, you think sometimes about the invisible injuries and, and how crippling they can be. And then here's a guy with you know, two prosthetic uh, legs that, you know, not only does he get up and go to work to help other people, but he comes home and he, and he does at home. And, you know, he, he was a, as much a leader at home as he was at work and as much as he was in our community. Uh, with that in mind, uh, you know, the organization's uh, continuing to work on projects uh, around the country. We've uh, got 12 cities we're partnered with this year with their mayors to uh, bring uh, veteran housing projects to their communities and help their local veterans. We've got uh, 20 other projects that we're working on uh, here out of this office uh, uh, currently. We've got a backlog of about 120 projects, uh, veteran applicants that we're working through. Uh, our chapters are continuing to grow. We've uh, received more and more calls for uh, developing a chapter uh, each day. Uh, last week we got three from Alaska, one from Hawaii, <laughs> and so uh, it won't be long we'll be looking for somebody to do some traveling. So the need is great and uh, one way local uh, people and people all over the country can support the efforts is by uh, purchasing your book. Uh, which uh, is going to be available on Amazon and you can also find information for it on the Purple Homes website, Purple Heart Homes website. Um, well, I want to thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Uh, in incredible uh, work that you guys are doing around the country and, and uh, I think the book turned out great and it's something that uh, uh, you should be proud of and I'm sure Dale will be proud of as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that was a very inspirational, and like you said, uh, the book was uh, just completed right before Dale passed. So right. Right. You, you can buy that at Amazon, I believe. Right, and you can also find uh, information about it at the Purple Heart Homes uh, website, so either, either way. Okay, so we talked earlier about the combined EMT fire training. You know, if you're a member of the fire department, you also have to be trained as an EMT now. That's one of the requirements. And so I went and did a first responder interview with Kyle Bell, Captain Kyle Bell. And he talks about what uh, inspires him, what how he got into the fire department. And, you know, he's the son of Brenda Bell, formerly the Register of Deeds. Oh, okay. So okay. we're going to see what, how, what, how he got involved and how he's recommending young people to go get their certificate for EMT and fire training. Hey, we're out here at City of Statesville Fire Department Station 3, and I'm with Captain Kyle Bell. Kyle, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? And he's our second in our series of first responders. And uh, Kyle, uh, let's start with, uh, why did you want to be a fireman? Well, um, a group of firefighters come to my high school um, when I was a junior and gave a little spiel about some recruitment of some volunteers right. and an explorer program and I don't it just kind of sunk in so I went home and I asked my mom I said I, I want to be a junior firefighter can I go and she she thought about it a little bit and go well, I'm not exactly sure about this but if that's something you really want to do then let's go see what it's all about um, and at that time it was Harmony Volunteer Fire Department there you go um, and went they held a meeting they were starting up a junior explorer program and um went in talked with them they gave us a good little presentation on kind of what it's all about and i was hooked and you um, hooked from then on because your mom was also uh she was the rester of deeds she was brenda bell yes for so many she, years so she was also a public servant she was okay um, so that meeting it led on um i was 15 at the time getting ready to turn 16. so and it just it really snowballed from there it, it really it really sunk in um and that's pretty much what the end of what, the, what the happened end. there so what makes for you a rewarding day here 
just helping others. I mean, I've had many rewarding experiences. Right. Um, and, you know, the most rewarding is obviously saving a life. Right. But it's more than just that. It's just being out in the public and helping the community. And ready to serve. Ready to serve. And, you know, if it's just pulling out of this station in the truck and riding down a road and you see a kid parked beside you waving frantically right. and wanting you to, I mean, it's just simple little things like that that, that really make this job rewarding. But then you have to go from zero to 100 when there is a fire or there's an emergency and when somebody's life is on the line. Yes. And, and, and that takes a lot of, you know, just preparation. Well, it takes a lot of training, a lot of dedication. Um, and like, like you just said, we go from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. Seconds. You got to be um, ready for that. And then along with that comes the experience of when you go from zero to 100 to being able to tame that anxiety, that excitement, that adrenaline rush because um, that's what a lot of this job is and, is and, and to be able to execute right okay effectively okay so somebody's out there watching this and they're th thinking about a job a uh, career in, in firefighting what kind of advice would you give them? stay in school um, go get your education there there are many um, fire service emergency service related degree programs mm -hmm. out there um, they, right here at Mitchell right here at Mitchell Yes, very good. They have a two-year fire protection technology degree that is perfect. Second and none. It's, um, it, it's very easy to attain now um, versus when I was getting my two-year degree, which was a little bit more difficult at the That's time. Correct. Now most of it's online based, it's self-paced, it's very easy to obtain. Um, so it's kind of a no-brainer. Why not go ahead and do it? And the way that they work now, you know, with the dual enrollment programs with the high schools, they can probably start getting some of that to accomplish like their Englishes and their right. maths at a collegiate level out of the way while they're still right. in high school. Okay. Um, and that really goes into um, the fire service, making the fire service better, having higher, better qualified personnel. Um, it, it's really very beneficial to the fire service and you as an individual looking to right. get into the fire service there you go so you heard it right here from captain uh, kyle bell he got the he got the the fever early on in high school and he's, he's stayed with it and he's you're part of uh, statesville's bravest right now yes so thank you for your service to the city of statesville and we encourage anybody considering a uh, degree go uh, look out check out metro college and come by and see kyle sometime yes anytime and, the doors right. are always open all right thank you very much kyle for your yeah. service thank and you be safe out there. hey um Last week I was the MC at Power Cross, and uh, Mike, I know you've, you've you've been following these folks for some time. They're doing a, a really good work with some young men here in uh, in Iro County. Oh, they definitely are. Uh, if you want to uh, find out where God's work is being done in Iredale County, it's it's right at Power Cross. It's a really a transformational program uh, for young men who who are at risk, to be honest, of uh, not going down the right path. And the work that uh, the Stormants and, and their whole team have done is, is just incredible. Yeah. yeah, I did an interview with uh, board member Matthew Redman. He's also one of our sponsors with Fastfield. So let's hear what he has to say about uh, Hey, this is Brian about town. I'm down here at the Statesville Civic Center with Matt Redman. How you doing, Matt? Oh, wonderful, Brian. Wonderful. Glad to be here. And I was so excited when you asked me to be the MC at this event tonight. And we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be here. This is going to be a great event. I think we're expecting about 450 people people uh, we've targeted raising a hundred thousand dollars so this is power cross so right. we know somebody asked you what is power cross what do you say power cross is a Christian ministry that uses athletics to help get young men in the door and then from there they're tutored and ministered to and they have Bible study and they have uh, camaraderie with other like-minded individuals and that helps drive them to get uh, you know, good grades and be uh, good athletes, and hopefully to send them on a college or career track. I mean, you see, you see transformation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's full okay. blood, full transformation. Okay, sure. so we're going to have a great time here at the Civic Center, and we'll be putting this on my new show, Stage for Free News and Views, uh, next week. And Matt, you'll be one of the first first guests. Sure. Absolutely. All right. So thank you. Thanks, Look, looking forward to it. There you have it. Uh, the, we've gone through five segments there, Mike, and uh, you know, next week we got a lot. Well, actually, on Friday we've got. Uh, 
Daryl Horowitz coming in for Friday at the Five, sponsored by Piedmont Healthcare, and uh, Yokefell is having a fundraiser. Right, uh, Inspire will be performing at the Civic Center, and there are tickets available. You can find out information at the Yokefell website, I believe. Okay, and also uh, Relay for Life this week uh, or this year is at uh, Signal Hill Mall. Right, and it's a uh, uh, they've. Uh, Shortened it a little bit. It used to be a 24-hour event. It's going to be four hours, uh, so there's no excuse not to go out and participate. Uh, it's a great fundraiser for the American Cancer Society. People don't realize that a lot of the money raised here stays here and helps people who are battling cancer here in our own community. Okay, so uh, come up next week. We're going to have an interview with uh, Patty West and Will Long uh, with Fifth Street Ministries, and Will's just taking that position out there. And it's uh, going to be a great thing. Also, I'm going to be talking to the uh, Statesville Family YMCA about their cultivation program. You know, they're teaching kids how to farm to plate. Right, how to grow their own food. That's right. And you'll be having another uh, Uber and Shaker interview, and we'll see who that is. Uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll let you know. Yeah, it'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in. Please uh, share and uh, go to my page, Ryan About Town, on Facebook. Go to SD, sdlfreenews.com uh, and sign up for email. All right. And we'll see you next week. Have a great